standing, starting thin if it needs to be thin about it, then pressing on it and then releasing that now, one. When you're creating these little lines, it might seem a little bit scary. So what you might decide to do is it's almost like a, a little um, cheat way of um, creating these little patterns. Okay, so, so far we've done a lot of different things. I've showed you how to create landscapes, I've showed you how to paint three different types of trees, but there are some other sort of more exotic trees that I wanted to show you how to work on. So today I will show you how to paint a cabbage tree, a palm tree and an acacia tree. If you want to follow along, uh, for this tutorial you would need some watercolor paper, some soft round brushes, watercolor paint or gouache paint or something water mixable that you have on hand. I'll give you a few seconds to grab those things, but for the rest of you this is enough time to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and press the notification bell as well. Okay, so let's start with acacia tree. I am going to do a quick background sketch but because this is a tree learning tutorial, I'm not going to bore you with all the background details, but I would prep the background and then go straight onto the tree. So acacia trees are quite beautiful. They're very, very shapely. They've got, you know, quite interesting sort of shape. And they're quite small. So I'm starting to work on this with a tree trunk. The whole trunk is more kind of like little branches and things. So to make things easier, what you can do is you can sketch a central line because they're so wavy and so separate and kind of go all over the place. You can just put the lines and then once you've done that and you're happy with what you've got, you can already give them thickness. So you can either go straight ahead like this or if you feel a little bit unsure about where you want your shapes to go, use this technique starting a little bit thicker and then thinner branches would follow and of course this part is the thickest so these are the main branches but there are a whole lot of other branches which I will add a bit later for now I'm going to create the tree top and sort of consists of these almost like cloud like formations of the leaves so now that I've sketched this, I'm going to go into the background and then come back to paint this tree. As I have created the background, I have painted over the tree as well. The reason for that is that the tree itself is quite a bit darker than the background. So I don't need to worry about, you know, leaving spaces and things like that for highlights. Plus, if I need to, I can always use gouache to create white highlights. Another reason for why you'd want to do something like this, if you are preparing the background, is there will be lots of little gaps between the little branches. So you don't want to have the white spaces there. That's why it's so much easier to just go over the whole area. Okay, now for the tree itself, I'm going to use a smaller brush, just because I'm working on a smaller artwork. If you are working on a larger scale, make sure to use a larger brush. I will start working with the greenery. The image that I have in front of me actually has a little bit of greenery and a little bit sort of, of brown shades as well. So I'm gonna start and work on both at the same time. It will also help me um, to create one area while the other one is drying. So I'm going to start working on the green one. Now if you have watched my previous video where I was telling you about the direction of the branches that is one of the important things that gets overlooked. Um, the same thing here, but also the texture of the leaves themselves is well quite important because you see how here, rather than big leafy sort of like European like um, trees, you get these tiny little sharp looking from the distance, little pricks like that. So. I suggest to work in a very similar manner to carry on that sort of a look. So there's still a bit of greenery here. If you're working on the larger picture, then you can give it a quick wash over 
and then work with details but since I've got a little one I can just go straight in and start creating the texture now this acacia um, tree has a little bit of sort of orangey in some areas of the brown so I've, I've added just a tiny little bit of um, orange and burnt umber and this is the color that I got in some areas I'm using a reasonably dense color with just a little bit of water and in some areas I'm going to be washing it out with quite a bit of moisture another color that I can quite clearly see in there is a little bit of purple just a tiny little bit in the shadow areas now purple is actually quite a common color that can appear and pop itself up in the shadows even though when you're looking you might not necessarily notice it straight away but when you start to really pay attention you would see that there's quite a bit of purple in the shadows sometimes there's quite a bit in there as well Now I'm going to leave this whole area to dry and while it's drying I'm going to work on the actual tree branches and the tree trunk itself. It is quite dark and quite brown and it's got quite a bit of sort of a darker shadow. There are lots of little branches and I didn't sketch all of them through because you know there's just needed work we can just do everything with a brush now if you are working on the larger artwork and you feel a little bit scared to just go freehand for most of the thin branches then you can always sketch them ahead of time with a pencil okay so these are the main branches that stand out the most and now I'm going to start adding the tiny little ones so this is where you want to pay a lot of attention to the image that you are working on and then there are some dried up branches so we can put those in as well they create quite a beautiful look to that tree really wild you know wild nature sort of a look We'll add even more of these later, so don't worry about adding all of them in. This whole lot of dried branches here, I think that must have been like another little branch like this with the little leaves, but maybe dried off or broke off a bit. So at this stage you can see that we have all of it mapped out. Now we just need to add more details and more saturation and also make some areas darker. If you are liking this you might like to check out my Patreon page as well because over there not only do you get to support this channel to support me making more videos for you you also get to see all the extra videos, tutorials, footage that you don't get to see here on YouTube. And all of that is only for eight dollars. There are also other tiers, so check out all the tiers because you might find something that's very, very helpful for yourself. Okay, back to the video. So now I'm going to go over some of the areas and actually most of the areas probably and intensify the color. So I'm going to start with the green and at this stage you have to make sure that you choose the right shade as well because this is the shade that would be much more intensely visible compared to the previous layer that we have applied with this layer now you need to make sure that you are adding the details as you go along so now you have to pay more attention to the shape and the little bits that are sticking out. Enough of green. Next is 
brown. See, I'm looking at the formation of all of these little, almost like little bumps, little heels on this. Um, and so make sure that you can create little shadows with using darker color or more intense color as well. But always pay attention to your reference. Next, I'm going to add some more of that orangey color. It's so interesting. This always so much orange in the savanna that's underlying all these um, all these colors that you see and I guess that's why you get these purple shadows as well not always but very often the shadow would carry on opposite colors of the colors that you would see in highlights so if highlights are orange shadows more likely to have a bit of purple and now for the really dark colors. So I'm going to mix a bit of black with the brown that I was using before. Now, when you're creating these little lines, it might seem a little bit scary. So what you might decide to do is to go very carefully, but that approach will actually create more problems for you. The reason why is that the more careful you are, the less likely it will look natural to look sort of bumpy and maybe too thick so give yourself a couple of tries before you start but trying to create them with sort of very quick little brush strokes going over the shadows of some of the larger brushes uh, branches to make them darker they're very silhouette like these areas of the shadow Okay, so here we go. So some more of those little shadows and things and keep adding those tiny little branches that are just sticking out. Now as we come to this thicker area of the tree, you can see that some parts carry a little bit more shadow, you know, it's got a little bit more shape, so we can start working on that too. So a bit more shadow on this side. A few dried up branches sticking out there, and a few of them there. And I think we've finished the tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit more on the background and then I'll come back to reveal the whole thing and remove the masking tape. Okay, so I have finished the background. Uh, all I've done is just a little bit of the shadow there and just a little bit more texture and just little bits and pieces. And now it's time to remove the masking tape. one of my favorite parts. All you need to do is just run something smooth over the fluffy bits that the tape has lifted off and it will be all fixed. So here we go. This is the final little tree all finished. Okay, so now let's move on to the palm tree. Now I know palm trees can be very different um, you know, you've got your coconut palm trees, you've got your dates palm trees and all sorts of different variations because they grow in Asia and Middle East and Africa, everywhere. But I just found this interesting image and I thought, you know, I could do something like that. So I'm going to actually draw not one, but two palm trees on this little sketch. Again, if you're working on a larger piece of paper, use larger brushes and so on. All the same stuff applies. 
because trees are my sort of a main subject I'm gonna start working with the trees so I'm gonna plant one of my trees here and it's sort of a standing on a bit of an angle and because these trees are quite long we can always just use a straight central line to build the main pole and then add the leaves over on the top and then I'm gonna add another one which is sort of a standing up closer and it's going to be here and it's going to be coming off the picture plane. Now I'm making them thicker to the size I want. This part here is a little bit thicker still. So this would be the area of the leaves, you know, falling off or being cut off. So then we've got the other one. And of course, because it's close, it appears larger. So I'm just going to sketch this through. And this. And now I'm going to mark the leaves themselves. Now I'm not going to mark every single little leaf, I'm just going to mark the branches. So these are the main branches and I'm obviously just focusing on this. And of course the orange root of the trees just marking it like so very sort of a soft you don't need to go into too much detail at this stage that's fine so what I'm going to do now is again I'm going to work over with a little bit of a background and then I will come back to explain what to do with the trees so I have done a very quick background um, nothing specific just a little bit of green and the blue and again as you can see I went over the trees because the trees will be darker in shade so I don't need to really worry about this getting in the way and blocking the colors um, that I want to create but at the same time it will save me all the time of create trying to paint between the little leaves and things like that so this is still a little bit damp which is absolutely fine and I'm going to start with the first sort of layers over the trees uh, themselves so the color I'm going to use would have a little bit of ochre and a little bit of brown together so I don't want to start with a really dark color and also I'll add some orange in there as well because it is reasonably warm and create a wash over the whole thing that you see that's what I mean the paint is still a little bit wet so it's sort of a, a hazing out a little bit which is absolutely fine for this you don't want it to be too too wet but this is just fine they do get a little bit wider as they come down to the bottom but it's not so much that it's really noticeable you know it's just slightly just somewhat now I'm going to look at the orange fruit and while this is damp I'm going to just apply a little bit of um, sort of a softer washed out color just as a large area and then later on I'll be able to add more details when the time comes they kind of like little sacks there we go and you see how using it on the paper that's still a little bit moist it's just helping me to to dispense the paint exactly where I want it to go all right now I'm going to do a very similar thing and create this underpainting for the leaves and the branches so now I'm going to mix up a little bit of green which is actually quite neutral it's not a very strong strong um, bright sort of a grassy green and you don't want to have your hand very stiff when you're working on this you want it to be a little bit relaxed and if you are the kind of person that tends to you know stiffen up and just get very very nervous when you draw or paint maybe even do some exercises you know where you just free up your hands and kind of you know to soften them up so now what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be putting through lines. So if you can get quite close to the lines that you've created with pencil, that's fine. If they're sort of nearby, again, that's not a problem. And you will see very soon why this can also work. Okay, so now we pretty much have this very strange image of um, what kind of looks like palm trees, but also looks a little bit strange. But that's absolutely fine for this stage. Next, I'm going to load up a little bit more of that green, but make it just a little bit less intense. So add just a tiny bit more water. And right around these lines, I'm just going to do a really, really soft wash. 
Now I know what you're thinking. You'll tell me, yeah, but the palm trees have those little lines. They do. And if, for example, I was, I had an image where I was kind of a photographer was standing really close to the palm tree and saw like maybe a branch or something, then yeah, definitely go in and put every single one of those. If I will do this on this situation, I will end up with a very flat, very sort of a strange looking image. Okay, so now I'm just softening, you know, that color just around that line. Remember, it has to be quite transparent. You don't want to create a really dark, very sharp line. You see how I'm, I'm making sure that it hazes out and to the outside. So that's why it's good to do this if your paper underneath is not 100% dry. Same thing here. Now, because there's quite a bit of yellow as well, while I'm working on all this and this is all still damp, I'm going to just introduce a little bit of that yellowy color in as well. Mainly where I see it. Okay, so this is good enough for now for the greens. I'm going to leave them alone. And now I'm going to start working on the actual palm poles themselves. For that, I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to get a little bit of Van Dyke brown and start applying some of the shadows that I see. There's quite a bit of shadow just under the air, obviously cast by the leaves, and then just a bit over on the side. So this one done for this stage. Now this other one is a bit darker there. Okay, now it's time when we need to look at the colors again and reassess what other colors do we need to add onto these areas. And I think we need to add a bit more orange just through here and a little bit of the brighter orange itself just a bit in here and in here. Okay, now I'm going to leave this to dry and work on the fruit. Now you can see how it's actually quite an intense orange that they are so we can we can do the same thing and sort of a play a little bit with these colors we can also darken some of the areas that are darker this one's in quite a bit of a shadow so we're just adding a bit of a darker color overall to tone it down so again i'm just using a little bit of dark purple through there and now same thing on the other tree Okay, so now while these are drying, we can go back to the leaves and work on those. So again, I'm going to go in for the green and first use the lighter shade. shade. Well, not, not necessarily lighter, but maybe just not as intense uh, and quite diluted. And let's start. So I'm going to again create another line and now I'm going to start creating these leaves coming off the lines. And you see having that wash behind there just creates this really cool sort of a very leafy effect and will really save you a lot of time and hard work. Again, make sure that you use a very sort of a soft free hand. Don't go too stiff like that because they will look not right if you're doing them very, very stiffly. They will look like little matchsticks sticking out of the palm trees. So you want to really just if they cross over that's fine because remember there'll be wind moving them around and it's very free flowing. Move your paper around to make it easier for your hand to do this work. And remember we're not using any dark colors just yet. We will be adding more of the more intense shades a little bit later. And now the same thing here. One and a whole bunch of wood leaves. Now I can go in with a darker green and create some, just a little bit more of the, you know, just give a tiny little bit more of vibrancy, just a little bit more sort of grassy and I'm just going to only apply it in some areas, so not everywhere.
And the same thing on the other side. Next, let's go into much darker shades. Again, for the leaves, while we're still working on the leaves, we might as well. And I'm just gonna add some brown, some green. And now, in just some areas, I'm applying some of the darker color. So not everywhere, but just in some places. And now we can give some of these leaves a better shape as well and make some of them very prominent. You see that creates a very three-dimensional sort of a illusion of those leaves. You know, makes them look quite full. And I can add a bit of a shadow on the, on the brown as well. And the same thing here. Adding some shadows, making some areas stand out just a little bit more. Okay, so now it's time to work on the palm trees. And I will show you a little secret on how to create them very quickly, you know, that texture. So what you need to do for that is mix up a little bit of brown. It's almost like a, a little um, cheat way of um, creating these little patterns. So you want it to be quite dark, but not too dark so that it's, you know, you can still see it over this color, but it's not leaving a really dark shadows you would have to struggle with. So what you need to do now is pretty much create a crisscross pattern. Like this, and now going the other way. And same here even more on the angle for this part of the tree. And same on the other one. So I'll just show you again. So you've got your color that's not too dark, but visible enough. This is a little bit larger up here. A little bit more in this direction. And as it starts to come down, going a little bit more horizontal. This would be very good to train your hand as well. So now that we've created this pattern, we need to make it look realistic. Otherwise it looks like they're wearing, I don't know, stockings. So for that, we would need to mix up a shadow color, a brown and a little bit of purple. And anywhere where you see a really dark shade, you just go over it. It's not peach black, it's still, you know, somewhat transparent. And now where you see really strong shadows, between these little things you already have them all mapped out so you can just add little shadows in between make sure that you apply the darker ones on the shadow side so pretty much like as if you're just deepening some of these lines and the same thing here and we carry on all the way down as well. Okay, now let's start a very interesting part where we're going to use a little bit of white. I'm using white gouache, but you can always use a white watercolor. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of white with that brown. And now I'm going to go in and over some of those um, sort of a medium shade spots, create the little dots like that especially do this on the area where it will be more visible so don't use it on the really light areas we will use a lighter color on that and don't worry if you go over some of the lines that we drew because you don't want to leave those lines in there as i said otherwise it will look like your trees are wearing stockings so you want to have some of that order visible but you don't want it to be so predominant and to be so in your next i'm going to add more white and go over the lighter areas next if you'd like to go for even a lighter color you just a little bit of it here just a bit of orange as well and just to create some of those warmer next i'd like to go over some of this orange fruit so i'm just going to add some um, highlights here and there just little you know just to, to emphasize the texture a little bit more with a lighter orangey color and then I'm gonna go over it with a more intense shade of orange 
go over some of the things that became covered up. Okay, so the only thing that's left to do here is to emphasize the shadows a little bit more. For the shadow, I'm just going to use a little bit of black, diastasin purple, so it's quite a dark purple shade. And in the darkest areas, create little, little shadows. You don't want to be slathering it on everywhere, but just tiny little bit. In some areas, you're barely even touching the paper because it's so strong and same on the other side as well if you feel that you need to add this maybe on the greenery as well you can do so now i'm just going to use plain white and on some of the leaves and things like that i'm just gonna create just a little bit more detail just to give it a bit more dimension so this is just plain pure white i'm using They're just little specks. And same thing here as well on this little pile. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the background off camera, add some shadows as well, and show you what happened at the end. Okay, so as you can see, I've just added a little bit of background and um, just very quick, very brushy and just added falling shadows. So just for those of you who still would want to go in with the shadows as well, remember that the shadows would be falling on the same side as you would have your natural shadow for the palm tree. And now it's time to take off the masking tape. So here is the finished little artwork. If you're just trying palm tree for the first time, you don't need to do two, you can just do one and you don't need to have a background, just, just try it on, on its own and then see if you might like to use this or include this in your full artworks. Now let's jump onto another tree that looks a little bit uh, different from the traditional trees that we are used to sketching and that is a cabbage tree. Now cabbage trees are very popular in New Zealand and some other parts of the world as well. Now let's have a look and break down how we can approach drawing a tree like that. It's very common to see these trees grow in little groups. So this is what I will show you today as well. So the main thing is that of course it's again a very long trunk and then we get the fluffy palm-like top. The only difference is that that palm-like top looks very leafy and each leaf kind of looks, has almost that sort of a sword kind of a look. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting central lines for the trunks. And next I'm going to widen these Of course, if the tree is wider, then you can uh, create more distance between your line and the central line, and if trees are quite narrow, you can draw them quite close to the central line. Now, the next step is to throw in the tree crown. So we've got this tree here, and I'm just marking these like that. And then we've got this tree here, and again, we get these very fluffy kind of a looking trees now the little one and another one so you can see how the um, the leaves sort of are going right from the center We're going upwards and then going down a little bit under the influence of the gravity so another thing you need to keep an eye on as well is that sometimes you might get some dried leaves so on the bottom there maybe some dry leaves but we will get to that when we are actually working on the painting what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do a quick background painting off camera and then i will come back and explain how we approach the trees if you're not working on the background then don't worry just carry on with whatever that is there now while this is still damp I will actually create a little bit of a different texture for the background and use a bit of table salt and a 
and now I just need to wait for this to dry a little bit so I can carry on working on the trees. This is still doing its work, the salt, but this area here is dry enough for me to apply the next layer without it running out of control. So what I'm going to do is for the first layer on the tree trunks. Mm -hmm. That way we will be free to add darker colors later on. So see, I'm, I'm working in quite a transparent color. Remember when it dries, it will be even lighter. So for now, what we're doing, we're just marking. I'll brush the salt off this here. Okay, so this is enough for the first layer for the tree trunks. And now, same thing for the leaves. So for that, again, I'm going to use two different shades. So I'm going to use a lighter shade because some of the leaves I can see on the image that I took, um, they are quite yellowy, almost ochre like. So I'm going to go with a lighter color and for these ones. And you see how when with the pencil we only give the direction, you don't need to worry about exactly where you're placing things. You know, your hand can just, you know, finish the whole composition. Uh, but you do need to put lines just to give yourself a little bit more of the direction. So that way you know where you're going. And the other ones as well. Next, I'm going to mix the darker shade. These are not the shadows I'm working on at the moment. These are just, you know, the variation in the leaves, the variation of color. Okay, so now while this is still damp, I'm going to mix a darker shade. So I'm going to mix a bit of black, a little bit of Prussian green, and a little bit of that deep green that I was using before. And just in the center there, just to add a little bit of the shadow. And while this is still damp, it will somewhat disperse. See here, this one's already dry, so... And same here. Naturally, of course, the darker leaves would be more closer to the bottom. Shadows from the leaves on the trees. And now while this is drying, I'm going to go back onto the tree trunk. So now I'm going to mix up a little bit of the darker brown. Start with the areas that are going to be the darkest. I mean, they will still have to go darker than this. But this is where you want to start and then drag that color through. And the same on the other ones as well. We're going to go in with a smaller brush and create a little bit more of the shadow color for the tree trunk. So adding a little bit of blue and deepen it even more in places where it needs it. Also at this stage we can start creating this texture. Just remember the more moisture that you have on these areas, the more the paint will run. So if you want to have a total 100% control over the texture that you can create, make sure you wait for things to dry 100%. On the other hand, at this stage, I think it's quite nice to be able to have these colors blur into each other a little bit. So it kind of does the job for me. So this is why I'm doing this now. And then later on, if we need more definition, we can always just go back in after it's completely dried. At this stage you can leave that to dry, but what I will do is I will add a bit more of the darker color just there, just by the leaves, right there. Extra contrasted. I think that's the beauty of these trees is that contrast, you know, that they create with their sharp leaves against the sky. Now we can go back to the leaves and start working at them with a smaller brush. Or again, if you're working on the larger scale, then you can carry on working with larger brushes. All right, so now I've got the darker color and now I'm going to be sort of a searching and rather than, you know, before we're kind of just looking at the whole thing and creating that chaos. Now we need to make a little bit more sense out of the chaos just here and there. You don't need to go in and outline every leaf or anything like this, but we can add some extra ones poking out. You know, the ones that are visible only sideways, that are quite thin. And that's why 
using a smaller brush at this stage would be just perfect. And by making some areas darker, you are bringing forward the other areas that are lighter, which means that you can create that sort of a three-dimensional look much easier. This tree is actually eatable. Um, many parts of this tree can be consumed by humans, but I think they have to be cooked for a long time to actually separate the you know the fibers of the tree from the starchy parts and so on. I know uh, Maori people in New Zealand used to use it. Okay, and the same thing on the third tree as well. So I'm just gonna create some darker leaves. And remember, this is also one of those trees where you don't want to have a very stiff hand because leaves fall so naturally they kind of wiggle they have the flick and so on so also you know there'll be wind sort of playing with them so try to keep your hand quite loose and just just trust your hand to do to create these movements also if you're using round soft brushes you can also control the thickness of your lines by you know how much you want to press on them so if you go quite sort of thin, then you can get a thin line all the way through. So I'll just show you there, like that. Then if you want to create a thicker little thing happening there, then you can, you know, either build it up like this by, by creating lots of lines and thickening that up, or just by sort of standing, th standing thin, if it needs to be thin, about it, then pressing on it and then releasing. And that way you can get sort of that shape as well. So it's kind of like a technique. You can practice this technique as well, like even separately on the paper. Just play with your brush, get to see what you can do with it, get to see the abilities of the brush and the different textures it can create for you. And then when you will trust your brush, it'll make the painting process so much easier. Okay, now going on to the bottom ones, and I'll do the same thing there. Now at this stage, if you feel that you need to still maybe make some of those lighter little leaves stronger, then you can go over with a lighter or warmer color, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes these trees can have almost sort of a reddish brownish leaves as well, so I'll show you some of those too. So you can play with that, you know, depending on what your image is. Okay, so there would be some brownish almost reddish leaves just on the bottom of the ear, so just drying off. You can add those as well. Also whenever you add something that's somewhat red next to the greener areas, it always makes the green stand out more because you know they are the opposite colors on the color wheel and that's what happens. And so on. Now it's also time to go and look maybe for one last time on the actual tree trunks and just see if we need to darken some areas perhaps or lighten them or probably more darken because it's quite light. But if you have gone too dark and you want to make them lighter, you can always add some white or wash the paint a little bit out depending on the technique that you would like to use. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating some really really dark areas and we can do them both on the leaves and on the bark as well. I think the really strong shadows can be really interesting because it can you know give that extra depth to your sketch but depending on you know the look that you would like to achieve at the end it might not necessarily be what you want to do so this is just as an example of what you can do and let's have a look what else we might want to add to the tree trunks like remember how i said you can use these things when it's still quite you know, moist and runny and you can just put little dabs on there and the moisture will take care of them. But now is a good time 
to add little things like this if you want them to stay put again these are just a tiny little things and that is only if you want to create your trees in quite a bit of detail if you don't if you want a very sketchy look then you can skip that okay so I would say this is done so what I'm going to do now is remove the masking tape and brush the salt off the background Here is the finished artwork. Are there any other trees that you might have found hard to sketch or maybe you tried and didn't like the result that you got? Let me know because I might be able to help and create a video for you on that topic. For now, I want to say a big, 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 great thank you guys to my patrons who are supporting me already on Patreon, who are making these videos possible. Thank you so, 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 so much. For now, I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely time. And thank you so much for painting with me.